Greetings everyone and thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. Tonight, we'll be delving through a famous historic hotel located off the corner of 2nd and Main Streets in downtown Dubuque, Iowa, that in 1983 was included as a contributory property to the old Main Street Historic District as the Julian Motor Inn, and that's infamous as a purported hideout of the legendary King Alphonse, otherwise known as Al Capone purported to be stalked by all manner of ghostly presence, are you prepared to brave the history and hauntings of Hotel Julian Dubuque? Historically, Hotel Julian's history starts way back in 1839, when an early lodging was established at 2nd and Main as the Waples House, under wealthy Dubuque merchant Peter Waples, who'd chosen the structure's placement in anticipation of it being the first building visible to travelers crossing the Mississippi and into the city. In 1854, this hotel was renamed the Julian House, after which it would undergo a series of refurbs and expansions, and it's actually now believed that on his travels to Galena, Illinois, Abraham Lincoln himself likely lodged on site. Through the late 1800s, the Julian House would earn renown as an icon of downtown Dubuque. In 1913, sadly, it was all but destroyed in a fire, and construction on our current hotel building was started shortly after, and would conclude by 1915. Through the 1920s, while Al Capone held leadership over the Chicago mob, it was rumored he was partial owner of the Julian. As it's told, Capone harbored a special place in his heart for Dubuque, and when things were getting too hot in Chicago, it said he'd travel to the Julian and use it as a retreat and hideout. Another related fable tells that old Scarface also had a concealed underground garage in the area, which he'd use to keep himself better hidden while visiting, though no evidence supporting this latter claim has ever been uncovered. In 1962, the hotel was purchased under Louis Full. In 1965, Full would close its doors for five years of remodels, which would include the addition of its iconic mirrored staircase and a number of other features still visible. And in 1970, a grand opening would re-establish the haunt as the Julian Motor Inn. In 2007, further renovations would be launched by third-generation foals, during which time the site would be re-established once more as Hotel Julian Dubuque and would reopen its doors in summer of 2009. While Julian's redesign would see its 168 guest rooms reduced to 133 instead, the spare space would be utilized to fit extra luxuries. The grand ballroom and historic lobby would see full overrides, and all the while, the hotel would welcome the addition of geothermal heating and cooling, a reflective roof, a swimming pool, and a gym. Hotel Julian Dubuque remains open into the present, offering its lavish lodging spaces while hosting Caroline's Restaurant, the Riverboat Lounge, the Potosa Spa, and large banquet and event facilities. Over its ridiculously extensive existence, Hotel Julian has been shrouded in an assortment of chilling ghost stories and local legends, with staff and visitors reporting a range of inexplicable occurrences, including doors that open and close on their own even when locked, lights that flicker or switch on and off on their own, and objects sighted moving about inexplicably or even floating in midair. A handful of accounts tell of otherworldly chills felt about that many describe similarly to having someone stand standing right behind them. Windows have been known to burst open spontaneously, disembodied voices and footsteps are heard from vacant spaces, and shadowy manifestations have been observed stalking the living at great lengths. An unidentified entity has been spied near the staircase, oddly floating about five feet off the ground, and the freight elevator is rumored to act on its own accord, frequently malfunctioning while moving at speeds that shouldn't be possible for its motor. Disturbingly, one entity on site is said to get quite aggressive at times, and several guests have reported waking to find burns, scratches, or bruises on their persons, with no recollection of how these injuries occurred. Additionally eerie are accounts from front desk staff of phone calls from vacant rooms that result in them having to go check said spaces, only to discover them locked up and completely empty. Lastly, while no official evidence confirming Al Capone's ownership over the Julian has ever been uncovered, a number of eyewitness accounts and reputable documentation paint his presence in Dubuque quite often throughout his lifespan, and it's widely accepted the unnamed Chicago interests booked as holding shares in the business were none other than King Alphonse himself. 
Additionally, records from Lewis Fole, who purchased the property in 1962, corroborate accounts of the legendary gangster not only lodging on site, but owning the property as well. Into more recent times, a range of stories tell of encounters with a full-bodied apparition that resembles Capone, dressed in typical clothing of the era, that's usually sighted on the upper floors and walking the halls, and that's been known to flash a small but infinitely confident smile, complete with a wink, at those he passes before fading away. Thanks for joining us on this Paranormal Pit Stop. If you enjoyed our histories and ghost stories, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and share us with anyone you feel could use a good scare. We'll see you all next time.